Hello, everybody. It's Lori White from the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce. We are back again with another episode of Chamber TV. And today is episode number 93. And we're really excited with our guest for today for episode 93, uh, a new member of our community. And we're going to talk all about continuing education. We're going to talk about higher ed. We're going to talk about uh, being in a growth mindset for our entire life. And we are going to talk about uh, what today's college continuing education student looks like and how we all might use um, such facilities to really, um, maybe even as a result of this uh, pandemic, decide that we are going to learn something new or perhaps even pivot. So we are welcoming Dean Carmen Aguilar, and she is the new Dean of uh, the School of Continuing Studies at Providence College. So hello, Dean Aguilar. Welcome to Rhode Island. Welcome to Providence. And I know you're brand new to PC as well. So we are so anxious to get to know you. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, beautiful cold day today in Rhode Island here in the campus and Providence College. Um, very happy to join you. I appreciate it and uh, appreciating and very grateful for the opportunity to address the business of, of the Chamber of Commerce members. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So um, I always begin our conversations by saying and starting, how are you? How's your family? And how are you uh, faring uh, during this uh, during this period of uh, the new abnormal, I guess, is the new abnormal? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, certainly very different challenges and, and very different time that we are living. I myself, most of my family is in Mexico, so they, they're they going through the same things that we are, are going through in the United States. Uh, I do have my, my, you know, some portion of my family, a small group here with me at home, and we've been there at home, you know, taking care of each other and uh, saving our energies and our focus on trying to see what the positive things in the future are and just keeping health and safety aspects as much as we can. Thank you so much. And I, I, I hope that everyone at home from all the members in the audience also are, you know, doing their best to keep their, their family stays and, and together. Yes. Uh, at the chamber, we're all um, abiding by the pause that um, Governor Raimondo has um, issued and we are working remotely and we are doing our part to uh, help Rhode Islanders get past this. So let's uh, let's start, um, Dean, by talking a little bit about your background. You have a engineering uh, undergraduate degree and you also have a master's degree in computer science and information technology. So those are very, very well sought after skills in today's um, general labor market. So let's talk a little bit about um, about your background and what brought you to this particular role. Uh, thank you. You know, it's, it's been very interesting to uh, grow up in, in higher education as a professional administrator and leader in, 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 this, uh, in this industry, especially when I started in IT. Um, you know, being a programmer a long time ago and a consultant in IT for for uh, other companies that I used to work when I was in Mexico at the end of my at the end of my master's degree brought me the opportunity to get to meet more the higher education industry, and I was just you know hired into um, the first uh, job that I had with higher education at Monterrey Tech in Mexico, which is the largest private university in Latin America. So I, I learned uh, a lot about from that job and I developed the passion for higher education. And I find out that, you know, the foundation for what I found in my master's degree in my computer engineer gave me all the tools to see very analytical problem solving, be very critical, be, you know, uh, innovator and to find problem solutions. And I was lacking about relationship building. And I was also lacking about how, you know, how to work with a lot of more people and besides my computer so through my more than 20 years in higher education i has be, i have been you know developing all of those skills and i think i become really good with those uh so the my my foundations and education gave me basically the you know the startup to build in, in the, the different blocks 
but uh, certainly technology has been a core and I've been using it in all my, my different jobs and still using it now, embracing it and loving it and try to innovate even more with the use of it. So since mm -hmm. I like it a lot. How many programming languages do you know? Well, you know, my languages are not useful anymore. 20 years ago, languages and computers is like many, many millennia of centuries and, and, and computer. Uh, I remember, you know, my last language that I, I, I learned it was C++. And, you know, even if they are already doing probably something in C++ these days, it's not even today the languages and computer science are so advanced and so many that I honestly, you know, I haven't catch up with the language and computer science for a while. I've been focusing more, you know, being, being a manager and administrator in a leadership environment. But I used to do COBOL and, you know, C++ and HTML and, and Java and all of those before. But... Yeah, I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> well, it's interesting that um, some of our chamber members as recently as a few years ago, um, some of our larger members that have big IT staffs and call center operations um, explain to us that COBOL programmers are still very much in demand. That there's I know. a lot of COBOL out there that, yes. that yes. has to build over. Yes, but you know it was interesting to to uh, in my in my personal experience to see how I actually went to a technical vocational high school to do electronics and I was an electronic system technician and then I moved to computer science and then I moved to masters in, in management information system. So I was from the core technical going slowly soft to more uh, or less technical aspects. But all of those technical skills and all those aspects that you learn when you're doing, you know, this designing and, and resolving and addressing clients' needs or what is the problem and how do you solve it, all of those have been going on through my career. And I, you know, I, I really like that. And when you are a computer engineer and you actually do and what my, even with my master and uh, management information system, analyze the whole organization as as a you know as a unit, and you understand all the different connections with the different aspects, uh, and in how the information can bring you value, and how the system can bring you value. It just it just it was very interesting. I, I still use in all of those techniques and all of those, even if I don't program anymore, any languages. Uh -huh. <laughs> <in the computer. laughs> I bet the professional staff and faculty are afraid of you. They know that you no. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess my staff maybe because they know, oh my God, she's going to bring more technological and more tools than the ones that we've been using the entire year. You know, this year has been a little interest for everyone in terms of using the new tools and new technologies. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm being very patient. So right now we just have to deal with what we have and we have a lot of great tools, uh, but certainly very excited to see what other tools we can use to improve and, and even become more efficient. So that's, that's basically what I'm looking for. You know, how we use technology and how we use tools or how do we use those skills to be a little more, uh, it wouldn't be easy for us and be more productive. That definitely is. Tell us a little bit about how you came to Providence College. How is it that um, this position of the new Dean of Continuing Education came across your radar screen? Thank you. Well, you know what, like, like in other phases in your life, you are looking for transitions and you're looking for opportunities to grow and opportunities to, at, at, at the time in my career where I am now, I'm looking for, you know, I was looking for a place to to grow not just as a professional, but you know, as a person and also individual soul internally. Um, so I have I had never had the opportunity to work in a religious institution in my career. I certainly started in higher education working in a private institution in Mexico. But when I moved to the United States, I basically was working in a state organization first at, at um, Keenan Flagger Business School in Chapel Hill, uh, UNC and then at Bristol Community College. And, you know, I was looking for a, a different place to go back to the four year institution, a more university and uh, focus. And then I, I saw that, you know, a, a private institution could be giving me the, the next challenge and the next opportunity. And it aligns with my values and my personal, uh, you know, plans to grow. And I was meeting with a friend who say, oh, you have you seen this? And I no, I haven't seen it. You know, I explore it. And I, then I start exploring it. And I say, why not? It's perfect for me. It just, it perfectly aligns all my experience and provides me the next challenge that I'm looking for. 
And then I read more about PC and I learned more. And even my daughter was telling me, like, when I mentioned to her, you know, I saw this job, I think I'm going to apply. And she says, PC, everybody knows PC, you know, everybody knows PC about their, you know, the scholars and the, and the things that they do, all the sports that they have. Everyone in my grade, she was an eighth grade at that time. She says, everyone in my grade is, is looking to be a PC one day because they like the basketball and they like the hockey and all of that. So then I got like, okay, you know, PC would be a good place. So I started reading more about it, and, and I just fall in love with the institution, their values, the love that the students uh, express uh, for the institution. And then when I started meeting alumni that, that actually in my region and talking about it, I just saw their passion and their love for the institution that I said, yeah, this is it. I'm going to apply. And look at here, I am. <laughs> okay, so um, why don't you explain a little bit about um, what the School of Continuing Education is all about in in today's vernacular. So here we are, you know, about to go into 2021. A lot of folks might remember, you know, the notion of continuing education from a long time ago, but things are, are very different today with today's adult learners. So Catch us up, if you will, on, you know, what are the hottest trends, the hottest things that are happening, broadly speaking, within the continuing education movement? Uh, well, actually, there are a lot of things happening in, in continuing education, and it's a field that is rapidly growing, and we see it exponentially in our everyday life. You know, everybody is now providing our many different uh, apps uh, to learn certain things in our lives. And you can even go to the social media apps and you are going to be able now to learn different things. And so lo learning and skill development have become like an everyday thing that we need, even if we're not even at school, you know, even if we're not even working, you know, just in our everyday life, uh, do it yourself things. And, you know, it's just the explosion with technology, the opportunity to learn things and they're available to our fingertips are just, are just amazing. So continuing education become more this concept from studying long time ago was used to be, you know, after four o'clock, the classes that a university or a college would provide for adults or for people who wasn't able to come to the regular day school. So everything after four o'clock used to be called the continuing education uh, programs. Today has changed so much uh, that now it's just, you know, the trend, the biggest trend now is uh, something called uh, the 60 years plus curriculum and the 60 years plus curriculum basically is that so you you have 60 years uh you know opportunities to provide continued education lifelong learning to a person who's probably interested in learning anything so that's from k to 12 all the way to after whatever years you want to so this 60 plus curriculum basically takes uh, a human or a student or a learner from when I started learning something in the school and continue doing in you know, K to 12 and then probably an associate degree, probably certificate programs, probably goes to, you know, bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, so post certificates, PhDs, and it goes lifelong learning enrichment programs and many other things. So the biggest trend is to try to understand the cycle of of learning and continuing education as a really lifelong learning. And that is not only one audience, but you can have audiences and we have audiences, you know, from continuing education from K to 12, all the way to seniors or all ages of the spectrum and all different kind of things that we can provide to them. So more specifically, you know, normally what we do in continuing education with this, this concept of 60 years plus curriculum is we focus on completion degrees uh, for adults that are working, and we are able to provide more flexibility for them to even do online hybrid or after work or on weekend, uh, intense or fast track or long, long or more time for them to to be able to accomplish in their degree because they all deserve a better future with better education. And we also provide certificate programs for workforce skills and different topics. Uh, that complement the bachelors or uh, add new skills to people who already been in the workplace and would like to chart their skills with some certificates. Uh, we have master's degrees for sure, uh, several ones here at, at, at Providence College. And we also have certificates post master degree. So, uh, and, and now we are venturing into providing professional development education and options 
for those who may want to take short courses uh they didn't want to take the credit but it's the non-credit version of it and they want to chart the skills you know get leadership get project management get analytical skills just to have a better writing uh, uh better communication skills better teamwork all of those short courses that are professional development focus and the additional piece is personal enrichment. You know, some of us just like to write for fun and we like to write for poetry or just like to paint or like to cook. So that is also another aspect of, of profession, I mean, uh, continuing education at personal enrichment. So as you can see, the, the concept of, of continuing education moved from after school uh, degree completion to a very broad aspect of lifelong learning. That's what the trend really is. Mm -hmm. So in your in your new role as the dean at Providence College, will you be looking to rewrite the curriculum and add different components um, according to some of the the um, the interest specialties that you just outlined? Definitely. Uh, Providence College has, you know, has a fantastic expertise and faculty and the team that has been working here. You know, the institution is more is being here more than 100 years and it's very solid with a strong reputation and the faculty members that we have are you know not only are only ex experts in their area but they also are pr practitioners more many of them you know they had been put in their hands into the real problems in the community and, and they do research as well. So what I'm gonna basically do is to work with the faculty, work with the team and the administration team and all the people are, are here at PC. And I'm partnering with the alumni because we have a lot of great alumni that are very committed and they love the institution. And they also had their own expertise through the years of their careers. And, and you know, we're reshaping the curriculum, we're restructuring the way that we are gonna be doing uh, continued education. We're definitely focusing on degree completion for working adults to continue giving them the flexibility and the affordability. But we are including and adding, starting in the spring semester, uh, professional development topics, short version of courses, like the ones that I was describing before, like, you mm -hmm. know, project management or leadership, more certificate programs that we are going to be offering, and also uh, looking to see what online uh, options we can provide or hybrid uh, options, uh, continue offering those. Uh, and one of the things that we are very interested in launching at, uh, even more is the uh, customized training services with, with business partners. So the School of Business at PC has been offering some of those services in a partnership with them. The mm -hmm. School of Continuing Education is now looking to understand the needs of the business a little more, partner with them, and be able to respond and tailor uh, solutions and provide the training in their workplace. So that those are some of the things that we're gonna be working on. A couple of the uh, interviews that we've done lately have been with um, leaders in the elementary and secondary education space, um, particularly around uh, accomplishments and proficiency and you know engaging kids during the the pandemic. So they believe that you know it's so important that young students, you know youngsters in the elementary grades um, return to uh, return to school and to be present. Um, versus doing the remote learning. What are your thoughts on um, the degree to which we learn better either in person or um, remotely or a combination of both? Do you, um, do you have a sense on, on your own personal preferences for what you would put out to your potential students for a way, a methodology, a platform for learning? Uh, as a as a professional development learner, <laughs> I have been learning my entire life, you know, even a new culture, new language, new way to live in different places. I've been moving 37 times from my initial home with my parents. And, uh, and, and, and I've been learning a lot of skills. So, you know, I was a computer engineer and, and now I, I wasn't, I went to, I didn't go to school to be a dean, right? <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. I had to learn and take courses every single week of, of the month and, and every year, many more. And I constantly do professional development. So I, as a professional, 
opinion. I love virtual learning. I do love online flexibility. Uh, you know, as a mother, uh, as, as a person who has to handle so many different things that and like their challenge uh, and you just want to continue learning. Sometimes you just don't find the hours in the day to go and try and go to school. So I do personally like online learning and I do love uh, the online learning that doesn't have to be synchronous personally. I do believe it. I used to work for a virtual university at Monterey Tech. Uh, I used to be building partnerships in Latin America with many different countries and universities to establish online uh, programs with business uh, business schools. So I really love it and I really believe it. I saw different results and the transformation that that provided, bringing education where rural places didn't have the chance to take or go to school or even build it and how online education was able to bring education to those remote places. Mm -hmm. So I'm a promoter and a believer, as you can tell. <laughs> um, but I also understand that the challenge of technology and the challenges of you know, getting access to technology is, is, a, is a real challenge. So sometimes we don't have the economic means or the infrastructure is not there. So technology and online learning sometimes, you know, bring you some changes that, that you have to contemplate in the design. And the other thing is that some of us uh, learn more and feel much better with the face-to-face -face and residential experience. So I do also believe that the residential experience is a good, is a good opportunity for, for those who enjoy it and like it and for those who are able to do it and handle it. Uh, for those who need more flexibility, that's why we have the other mm -hmm. modality. Mm -hmm. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard you say that you take uh, courses, you take online courses, professional development opportunities um, every every week. So you're always, you know, enrolling in something new and learning a new, um, you know, new set of aptitudes, whether it's a certificate or um, another, you know, type of, um, you know, perhaps even leisure activity. Yes. I do, I do. I, um, you know, I use a lot of, of the different things that my institution now being as a new employee in my four months and a half, I've been taking a lot of courses, a lot of, a lot of sessions with the, with the institution that they offer me for different things. Uh, obviously we are offering uh, in, a, in a virtual modality, but I still, you know, I still take it then because I like to learn. I want to know and I want to be better. I also use other technologies and other resources uh, like LinkedIn. Um, and, and, you know, other, other third party providers. And honestly, I use you to a lot. I, I, I had to say it, honestly. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, that I am a very handsome person. I guess that's my engineering background. I like to fix things at home and I like to learn how to do things uh, that I have never done. And, and, you know, I, I, I just have um, my, my pet, my dog has been with me only two years here. And, um, I've been training myself to be a training for for my dog. So my pet is doing a lot of tricks that I learn every single day, how to teach her, how to do it. And I'm growing also as a, as a person teaching a dog how to do it, right? Oh. Um, so I, you know, last, uh, I, I bought my first house ever in this country five years ago. And, and I, I had been doing a lot of projects in my house. You, I wouldn't even believe that I was able to do it. So last, Last two months, I've been renovating a bathroom in my house, and I did it all with my daughter, you know, from A to Z, and it was done last week, so that's good news for us. <laughs> and you, uh, you, you, um, looked, you consulted a lot of videos on YouTube and... You know, yeah. what? And, and you know, also I had to go and learn, you know, uh, other places, even in the vocational schools, uh, taking classes about how to fix, how to do this, how to do the other. Um, but in my professional role, also, you know, every day I had to go more about how to become a better leader, how to, you know, manage remote teams, uh, better things with project management, you know, all different topics that are offered. And even if I feel like I don't need it, I think I can learn something. Well, no wonder you're a natural for this uh, this role as dean of the School of Continuing Education because you are you yourself are such a prolific learner that you understand what the target audience wants, what the target audience how they want to experiencing and experience it, and how you know sort of to journey map the whole encounter so that students can feel 
like they have a sense of accomplishment and they can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Yes. And, you know, I do. I'm a, I, um, I had to go through a, a lot of different uh, courses and different modalities for different reasons. And I understand clearly um, the challenge of a working adult or an employee who's trying to chart their skills or to try for new opportunity or to grow within the institution that they are currently are or in the new job, or even just to solve a problem that they have an, an, at, at the job every day. And, and how you, you know, sometimes would like to be able to do it and with a little training or with a little course or with a team of people that are going through the same aspects and they can get together and learn together how to do it with good uh, good facilitators and good instructors. You, you're able to solve those things and you're able to think about new, even things that you weren't thinking before. And, and then you just come back and, and re-energize yourself and say, okay, I can do this better. And, and you do that and then you start growing. So I, I just love that. I have passion for learning and passion for seeing how others can utilize their skills and they change their life that way. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I'm in that role. I really enjoy it. I'm very passionate about it. I do believe that continuing education is is a lifelong learning experience. Um, and I want to be able to develop the opportunities for audiences that can take up, up, you know, the opportunity to learn and continue learning with PC or with Providence College and with us in the School of Continuing Education and all agents. So at some point, definitely I'm looking to see we can offer programs for youth, high school and maybe younger and bring more kids. I know that we're already doing some programs, bring more kids to, to the campus and, and share with them the expertise and the knowledge and have fun with them learning different things that Providence College has to offer. And working with seniors as well, um, uh, senior citizens that may want to bring and share and become mentors to, to youth as well. Uh, you know, and, and in terms of the professional aspect of professional development and continuing education, look for new undergraduate degrees that could meet the needs of our community even better and really understand the needs of our business partners uh, and, and the needs of the industry and the, and the local and regional area and analyze it better and, and respond to those needs with the certificates, the courses, the professional development options that the business are looking for and that our community organizations are also looking for in general. So I'm, I'm very passionate about understanding the needs and be able to put something uh, that will address those needs. How do you begin to understand um, the appropriate price points for um, continuing education when there are so many offerings out there, you name it, um, you know, between Coursera and, you know, Khan Academy, yeah, <laughs> you know, and as you said, anything, you know, YouTube um, or lots of, you know, different, um, you know, schools and places and organizations, private sector organizations, industry type training programs, industry certificates, stackable certificates, um, places like General Assembly that do the tech training, um, course horse, you know, there's a whole, um, you know, the whole array, different types of delivery models, for-profit educators. Where, where, what is the price point theory in your view for what you're going to be um, considering at Providence College? Oh, Laurie, that's one of the toughest questions I have ever had. <laughs> um, but I, I, I can give it a try. At least I can, I can tell you what the approach is at this point. It's uh, pricing is always the hardest. One of the hardest things, you know, one is the hard, one hard thing is to to be able to really understand what the needs are and to respond to the needs of, of the community and the needs of the business. Uh, sometimes we believe that we understand it and maybe we, we just don't quite understand it well. So my approach with that one is partnerships, you know, partnerships, conversation and assessment and constantly, you know, working with business. But when we get to the pricing, we already develop the product when we are agreed that this is the best solution for the needs and we're gonna go through is, is how do you communicate the value add? How do you measure the impact of something that you think that this is gonna this is gonna bring these outcomes is a hard. Put a price is always hard for every every single business is very hard. But my approach is basically, you know, you do an analysis, uh, competitive analysis of pricing definitely uh, according to the market. I could probably say this is gonna cost a hundred dollars, but if I'm selling it in another place, the same product, maybe a hundred dollars is too much. I'm selling it here probably is is a low cost. So I gotta find the balance 
in the environment in the region that we are with, you know, based on different factors, you know, the value mm -hmm. add that we have or reputation or cost, of course, um, and, 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 and just all the aspects of, of, of the quality and, and the impact that we're going to have. So we have, we have a formula that we're working on and we're improving as we speak, but the, it has to be very sensitive about how, how flexible and affordable is for those who are going to pay for it, right? And, and, and that is fair for the quality and the value that, and the impact that we are providing. So that's a very hard uh, question to answer. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm not gonna give you a clear answer today, but we're working in defining the best pricing for the value add that we provide. Well, I think that's a great answer because um, you know there are, there are so many ways to, to look at it. And um, it's something that you have to really think about as a, from a leadership perspective, I would imagine in, in how do you compete in the marketplace with your own product and how to make it affordable, but also convey that it's quality. Because a lot of times I, I recall conversations about pricing psychology, where if something is priced, quote unquote, you know, it's too cheap, then it's, you know, must not be a value if it's only, you know, three dollars for you know if you charge you know just hypothetically you know a hundred x times three dollars for the same thing then all of a sudden you know the the perceived prestige of the object or the item or the service you know takes on a different meaning um so do you uh, is there any value in in thinking through um thinking it through like that and do a lot of your competitors if you will competitor uh, institutions or not even institutions, but competitor entities, do you think that that comes into play? It, def it definitely comes into play, uh, uh, all of those factors, you know. Uh, you know, we start always with, you know, who is what we want to serve and who is that we are serving at this point, right? And, and if we are providing the access, the flexibility and the quality, and what would be the way for them to access our, our services? Um, but definitely the competition takes a big, big, significant uh, role into it, into the pricing. Um, and also the cost, you know, it may cost us different to us than others. And we're trying to make it more efficient and, and less cost um, for us and more cost effective. But the cost is also a, a big factor. And, and, and at the end, you know, how do you put a value in something that you don't know what the impact is really going to be, right? It, it's hard. It's hard. Pricing is hard, but definitely all of those factors come into place. Yeah. Well, you know what I bet is also hard is finding the right talent to lead these courses. So the right faculty, you know, mm -hmm. because you could have the greatest curriculum and syllabus and module and delivery method and technology and, you know, seamless experience for registering. But if you put someone forward who, you know, doesn't inspire somebody to learn, um, yeah then then you're really in a tough spot right so what what is it like to try to source um teaching professionals to deliver content passion is the number one <laughs> you gotta have to have passion for uh for students and and for teaching uh and passion for you know transmitting and communicating your skills and and the topics that you love for others to be able to understand and to embrace and, and, you know, this spark their brains and, and, and have fun with it and also grow with the topic. So I, I definitely think that the biggest element looking for a faculty or for, or for experts that could teach with us is, is the passion for, for the topic, the passion for the teaching, the expertise that they have. And, and you know, also the skills to be a good communicator, uh, the skills to be able to put that on practice in real life um and, and 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 also to have fun in the class you know it, it, the passion has to come through to fun as well uh it, not because we're learning how to be always so serious and not fun and so rigid but uh, you know if you are able to do it in a fun environment that makes it people to feel very comfortable that will be that will be great and and i'm looking for people who who has the ability to bring all the experiences and expertise from those who are the students or the audience and, and embrace those and bring in and in, include them in the teaching process. Uh, mm -hmm. So that becomes more a community of learning instead of a one way learning. So um, for my, my perspective in community education, finding a faculty, um, it, it, it's also tough. 
and then you have to develop them. But we are very lucky at Providence College for the faculty that I have met so far, uh, very passionate, very committed to the students and significant expertise and doing research and a lot of things. And I actually think that I, I am gonna definitely uh, tap into their capabilities and talents to uh, have them to teach more courses in the school. Uh, and we also have professionals outside the, the Providence College that are part-time faculty or adjunct faculty who are working right now in their fields and they come and teach a course or two with us and they bring in that experience. So that to me is very important to have the balance between academic teaching and practitioner teaching. Um, and, and, and then, you know, we also have alumni who went through this uh, process with us. They are now professional and experts, and they come back with their passion and their love for the institution to teach, which I'm also looking for. And I also have business people who are working in the, maybe some of your members, uh, and, and they're coming and teach for us, which I value a lot. So I'm looking for expertise, for passion, for ability to teach, and, you know, the love for the students and the, and, and the desire to, to transform and change lives. Well, I know a lot of people that are really um, in tune with the idea that um, that when they retire, retire early, um, leave their profession, um, they're going to, you know, do something else. A lot of people are really interested in teaching, mm -hmm. and whether it's at the higher ed level or at the, um, you know, the elementary or you know, secondary education level, there's a great deal of um, respect to the profession among people that are business professionals. I've noticed that during the course of, um, of my career. Definitely, we, we do have um, very lucky, you know, when people that are experts in their areas and wanted to explore teaching, uh, even as a compliment or just because they, they like that or because they're planning for later, like you say, for retirement in the future, um, it, it, is, it is good. Uh, and we do have encountered those cases as well. Um, I haven't met my entire faculty uh, members, and of course, I haven't met the faculty, uh, all the faculty at PC yet. But I do understand that we have a lot of faculty that are, you know, from all all ages and, and experiences. Um, but many of, of, of the faculty teach in the continuing education uh, programs as well. And I do, as I mentioned, I have business people that are teaching. Uh, one of the things that I find it very interesting is when when we have faculty. Or, 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 you know, um, practitioners who are teaching that are working in companies and they're doing their job and this is just like a, you know, after work or a side or something that they want to develop in the future, they just like to teach, is that they, when we partner them with the academic, the innovation is more and the opportunities for new programs, uh, you know, arise than uh, many cases. So I, I like to team up uh, that kind of teaching. I, I, I like that. So actually we are, we, uh, we just recently launched, um, it's going to start actually offering a new program for master degree, uh, master in science and business analytics or business school, not my school, but business school at Providence College is starting on, on the fall of 2021. If everything goes according to plan, we're going to have a new master degree in business analytics. And that became, you know, with the efforts of the internal faculty and the business partners. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about business and how the business community can, in fact, be a more effective partner, um, both to assist Providence College, but also um, to help their own organizations and entities. So um, let's talk a little bit about what you might be looking for relationship wise and what are some of the big, um, you know, points of um you know, points of pride do you want to be able to convey? Well, you know, first of all, I really am um, very eager and excited to get to meet business partners and, and build uh, relationships, network a little bit more. Even with the constraints of the pandemia, I, I find out, uh, you know, this media that we're looking at working up today uh, is an opportunity for us to still connect. Is it, it doesn't feel the same way. It doesn't work exactly at the same level, but it's still an opportunity. So I'm looking forward to connect with business. I definitely will appreciate, you know, the chamber and other business partners working with our alumni at Providence College and a lot of, of my colleagues to connect me with with the community and, and network a lot I, I I just love 
to meet people and, and build relationships with. So that's that's number one that I'm looking with business, you know, and then work with them, get to meet them and get to understand what their needs are. Uh, when they're starting to understand their needs, you know, we today we probably have challenges that we have probably the idea that someday we will have but we're not focused on, on that before. And now we have those challenges and probably more. So the pandemic has given us the opportunity, if nothing else, to really think more about what skills we we need after this pandemic and how we're gonna be continue working uh, as effectively or even more after the pandemic. So there's skills and things that um, going through everybody's business and work environment that I, you know, I'm looking to to understand better. What are those needs that the employers are, are you know, having right now? What are those needs that are arising that they didn't have before the pandemic? And how we can understand their needs better and what kind of conversations we need to have? You know, I would like to do a research analysis with a business in, in partnership with our, uh, with our faculty here, and obviously, you know, the chamber probably want to join us in other institutions to analyze the, the needs of, of, that are arising uh, and employers and how we can address those needs, you know, in different areas, soft skills, uh, workforce in general, more technical or more specialized needs. So in the conversations and in a study, maybe we can uh, understand better those needs, discuss them, and then talk about what, how we can address them. How can we solve them in collaboration with, you know, our school and other schools or other entities in the community that could address the business needs. Uh, and then, you know, define what the solutions or the possible options for solutions are, even if we provide them at, at the, from the college and collaboration with others, or, you know, what, what the solutions are at the end. The stronger the business are, the better the community and also better for, for mm -hmm. Providence College. So networking, uh, needs assessment or, or understanding the needs, uh, talking with the business, you know, getting to know what their constraints and challenges are and what is arising from the pandemic and what are they going to get ready how they want to become stronger after the pandemic. So certainly the um, the notion of gathering data and uh, presenting um, analytics that are informed and based in data are very important, but um, I can a sense from you that you have a great gut instinct as to what you think the skills uh, that employers are going to be looking for as a result of the pandemic. So what, is, what does your intuition tell you? Well, you know, one of one of the things that um, it, it tells my my experience more than my intuition, <laughs> my experience tells me is that always, always the fundamental skills are necessary. You know, how can we better communicate? How can we better close the gaps of misunderstandings? How can we address problems in the new way to do things? How can we manage conflict resolution even better? How can we become a stronger teams, more productive groups? Um, how can we drive better, right? <laughs> how can we innovate uh, in this new world? You know, how can we be more uh, sensitive to the cultural and diversity environments that we are living through? How can we be more nimble and more flexible organization? And in more specific uh, in our technical skills, what um, what core skills are needed uh, besides um, the fundamentals? Uh, what they call it, soft skills. So soft skills are definitely many different higher needs and all across different areas, e even process improvement in, in all of those, if we want to call it that, even core skill. But also uh, the technical skills, you know, being discovered that we may need to improve the in charge technical skills in different aspects. We, we definitely learned a lot through the pandemic, but there are other technical skills that maybe need to be sharp. And, and the specific industry needs and technical skills in the industry, you know, the healthcare industry is going to need probably slightly different than the healthcare, I mean, than the education or the manufacturing or you know, the finance or the green industry. So what are those technical skills that are rising? Uh, I will say, you know, it really don't, I don't really know all of them. I have a good sense of that, but every industry is very different and every, even in the industry, every field is slightly different than other in the technical skills, but I do have a very good understanding of the core across industries. That that is, you know, some of the things yeah. that I just shared. Mm -hmm. 
Does it surprise you that the need for these essential skills um, are, the need is becoming even more profound? Does that, does that, um, does that surprise you? That well, it actually doesn't really surprise me, but what definitely is confirming is that we knew, but now we know even more, right? Uh, and we knew that we may needed to improve it, but now we know that it needs to be improved. Or, or we realized before, you know, how important was uh, communication. And now that we are working remote, you know, communication skills are even more important than ever before, because that you know, we communicating even in a completely different format than we were communicating before. And we knew that, you know, teamwork was important. And now that we are remote teamwork, it's even more important. So I guess we, we've we been talking in workforce development and professional development about those skills for, for a while. And I'm sure in the chamber members, we you been expressing those for, for a while. It, it just, we just like planning slowly to get to solve them. And now we are like in our face. We need them and we need to address then uh, in different formats. How is Father Sakar doing as the new president of Providence College? Well, I, ha I have to say that I'm very happy to be part of a family, the Friars family, who has such a great leader, a very spiritual and very kind person. I think he's doing well. I mean, I have seen him uh, a few occasions in some of the committees and meetings that I, I jointly go with him. I haven't had the chance actually to meet him face to face, but I met him virtually. And, you know, so I'm very proud to be part of, 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 of this group and working with him and, and with his team. My pro boss is also new, uh, Dr. Shian Reed. He, he's also new. So we've been, you know, the three of us are new in our positions and we've been having a little fun and learning a lot of different things. And they're doing good. I'm, I'm very amazed and very highly respect both of them for all the top decisions that they have been made through the pandemic with the students and the different challenges that the institution has been going through. So and my evaluation is that they're doing great because they've been able to solve some of the toughest probably challenges that they have faced in their careers and, and they were just new in the jobs. So um, very, very kind approach, very focused on, you know, doing it the right way and a tougher way, but uh, always thinking in the families. And, and I'm, being, I'm being very pleased, you know, so far for, for joining the, the family, the Fry's family. If um, any of our listeners or viewers would be interested in a enrolling in a professional development or continuing education series of courses, or even um, approaching you and your colleagues about possibly um, teaching and providing that passion that you were talking about so emphatically and so beautifully, um, what's the best way for them to engage with you at this point? Well, uh, I can definitely give you my uh, my email. <laughs> it's at caguilar at providence.edu. And uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Carmen Aguilar. And also you can connect me, uh, connect with me through that. But we and the college have a, a website and the School of Continuing Education at Providence College. You can visit us on the website and you can connect through uh, with, with, with us through that. You have our, you will see the catalog of courses and programs, certificates, master degrees, and, you know, professional development programs that we're going to be uh, offering and, and, and starting in the spring. That's a pretty good way to do it. Uh, SEE at, um, User, I see you use it at Providence College. It's a, an email. You can find it in the website as well. And just give me a call. Uh, you know, and, and I'm always recruiting and I'm always looking for ways to collaborate and partnership. So I will be looking to talk with your members, uh, the business and with the community in general and get to learn more about Providence, Rhode Island and the opportunities that we can build together. The, um, the website that you referred to and the new portfolio of programs, um, would you say that you have been able to implement a bunch of new things for the spring? I know you're very new in the role, um, or are you anticipating that the bulk of the new offerings would probably occur in the fall? Uh, well, you know, I have a fantastic team and great uh, new leaders and supervisors at top of uh, my leadership. And they've been giving me the freedom and the ability to do, you know, whatever we need to do to start innovating. So we're definitely not doing a lot of innovations in the spring because it takes a while. But we are launching the first uh, uh, professional development short courses 
four hours and a half in topics that are like project management, uh, like, you know, like business uh, topics and uh, conflict resolution and other topics like that, that, that are short mm -hmm. courses in professional development, certificate programs. And um, so that, that and, and, and other uh, and personal enrichment topics that we're also going to be providing uh, for our audiences. And in the fall, we definitely will have the opportunity to to think about more in the certificate programs and new new degrees. Um, but uh, in the spring, we are definitely launching new programming. So I can't let you go without asking you, um, what has been your most memorable, your favorite uh, professional, personal enrichment course that you've taken over the course of you know your career? So we're talking, you know, if you're doing them every single week. Uh, you have a lot to choose from. So tell us. Well, it's very hard to choose one. Uh, but I, you know, and I did say that I'm a lover of, of online education, but I do have to say that one of the best ones has been in a face to face. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, uh, that was my immersion trip to China as part of learning Chinese uh, in the three weeks that I was in China and uh, trying to practice my language and learning how to be a business person in China. Uh -huh. So that was an immersion experience with my faculty and my fellow students. And that was one of the most interested and enrichment experience that I have in my any courses that I've been taking. Uh -huh. Have you been able to continue to use what you've learned and the role um, as we speak? Can I you? haven't used the Chinese as much, you know. I, 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 I'm now more into English and Spanish than any other language. And then when you don't, when do you, you don't use the language, you, you, you lose it. But I definitely have a lot of more appreciation for different cultures, even more than before. And to learn from a culture that was completely different than anyone else that I was, uh, you know, involved or in contact with. And at the end, we are the core humans, uh, and we are the same people. We just speak different language and live in different countries. So I've been using it, and in terms of being more holistic approach and a more, I would say, hopefully better manager and better leader, uh, because I understand also, you know, better different things that I probably didn't understand before. Yes. Well, we have really enjoyed um, spending an hour with you, uh, Dean Carmen Aguilar from uh, Providence College, the new Dean of the School of uh, Continuing Education. We've learned a lot from you uh, this afternoon, talking to you about everything from the profile of today's learner to uh, the different modalities and the different uh, cost structures and, and what's popular today. Uh, with today's students. And of course, we, we learned all your favorite tricks and places uh, to go for uh, additional professional development. And we're really excited about the opportunity to um, partner with you at the chamber and to have our members meet you and um, for us to begin to play a role in, in helping Providence College and being a partner with Providence College as you explore this extremely important uh, new territory, which is all around workforce development and helping uh, our talent, helping our employers to be able to source talent that is uh, more resilient, more well-rounded, and you will play an important role in this. So we look forward to uh, working with you, uh, and we hope that you will call on us at any time. Um, should you need our immediate assistance, and I hope you will promise that you will come back here to Chamber TV in a couple of months uh, when you finalized your um, your set of offerings for the fall of 2021 and give us a, a heads up as to what we can expect and how we might enroll and how we might be able to tap into the obvious passion that you have. So thank you so much. Thank you, Laurie, and thank you to the Providence Chamber of Commerce for giving me the opportunity to meet you and to have this, uh, you know, this time together and chat and share some of the ideas and things that we're doing here. I would love to come back and maybe by then we have a research study about the needs in the community with employers and we even share data with, with the yeah. audience. I'm really looking forward to work with your members and the employers in the region. And more than anything, I'm looking forward for uh, the pandemic to go out of my life and our lives and have the opportunity to meet you face to face and, and build different projects together. 
We absolutely will do that. And uh, hopefully it will be very, very soon. So thank you again. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.